Basil, how did you discover your passion for VFX? Any movies, ads, or let's say video game projects uh, that sparked your interest in, in, the, yeah. in the field? Well, like, like the rest of us, it's all start with watching a movie. Mm -hmm. So you get hooked, hooked by it, like this is, wow, how did they do that? And then you move on to like trying to make in something. Uh, I remember uh, the first movie I watched was in, the in theater was with my uh, late uncle. He took us to watch Robocop 2, me and my cousin. Mm -hmm. And uh, we enter in the middle of the movie, but they will let you stay there as long as you, as you want uh, when you pay the, your ticket. So I watched the second half and then we watched the first half. And I was really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was so really it's, uh, okay. I yeah, see. <laughs> I was a kid back then. Doesn't matter when you're a kid, <laughs> everything is cool. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I really, I really amazed by the the RoboCop two, the villain. If you if you remember, you I, I believe you watched the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was really amazing that uh, machine gun in the the right hand, and he was addicted to drugs. I think really, really a nice piece of art. Uh, I really until now I enjoy watch it. Uh, I hope one day they will do a remake with, for that specific sequel. So I really enjoyed it. I think they did. I did. The, I they did they, the first did one. The, the first one. Yeah. There wasn't. There wasn't a true villain like the second one. The second yeah, one yeah. really was great. They, they should. They should do that. So yeah, uh, that's true. yeah. I think that's the first like sci-fi VFX movie that I watched, and I was really impressed. Uh, and I and I like movies and ga video games in general, so I keep watching movies, especially sci-fi movies. But the the real movie that really like triggered me was Terminator Two. I think that like mm -hmm. probably also the rest of us that that like, yeah. <laughs> that's unbelievable. That answer. movie dragged so many people to the <laughs> it's the same answer for all of a generation. Uh, <laughs> nothing new I here. I think yeah, we we should. I don't know. You're running we out should. of ideas. <laughs> We should make a tribute to James Cameron. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, really, steel, really. You know, for yeah. this movie. That Liquid Steel uh, character, that yeah, Liquid yeah, Steel, that's amazing, uh, amazing. I mean, that, this is what gets me to the industry. That, yes, that, yes. Just that particular shot. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. I, I mean, I don't know what to say. It was 1991, believe that. It was 30 years ago. And still looks 30 great. years ago, that's exactly. unbelievable. Yes, yes, unbelievable. And it's still, it's, it aged very well, actually. It's, that's yeah, the it thing. still holds up. I mean, it does what it, exactly what it needs. And if you, if you watch the making of... They they used every trick in the book to make it happen. It's not just CG, but it's all coming together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing, really, really. Yeah, it was great. So uh, after that, uh, I, I I finished my high school and uh, and based on my grade, I in, I entered institute uh, civil engineer assistance. And back mm -hmm. then, I didn't know what to do. I know that I like science, I like reading, and I like video games and movies. So that's it. So the first year, the first year of uh, my institute, they asked it to uh, to uh, create a project. I, I my, my my branch was the architect branch. It was civil engineering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. So we asked to do a project. Uh, it's not a graduating mm -hmm. project, more of an exhibition project. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then, 3D Max was released, and some of my friends were start learning, it, and I was really like, why should I try to do this? So I rented. Uh, a PC. I didn't own a PC back mm -hmm. then. I rented one, and my project was to create a 3D image of a house. And mm -hmm. I start learning, and um, I was learning, and 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 my project keep evol keeps evolving. So why not uh, do some uh, images from inside rooms? Why not dividing into rooms? Okay, why not putting some texturing? Okay, I'm gonna learn to do some texturing. Why not to doing some furniture? I will try to like do some 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 more uh, modeling techniques. Suddenly, uh, the project become a video with cameras inside and outside the house, with some editing and some nice music. Uh, and and when I show them in the exhibition back then in, in two thousand uh, not two thousand nineteen ninety nine late ninety nine ninety nine they were all impressed. Like this was like something really new for them. So mm -hmm. I, suddenly it's like clicked. Uh, this is what I wanted to do. This is the thing that I wanted to do, and it start. It start with architect, move on to animation and VFX, and here we are, twenty years <laughs> later on, uh, doing the same thing. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, when you when you, when you first so did you so you you did uh, you you studied architecture right? 
Uh, I studied civil engineer uh, assistant basically. Civil yes. engineering. Okay. Civil, yeah, it's it's architect, but it's not. Uh, uh, it's more of a foundation of buildings and. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say your 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 studies is not related to VFX. So you basically not learn exactly. VFX by yourself. Not, not really, no. But it's actually you're it a was, self-made man. Yeah, yeah. It was it was the reason. As I told you, this project was the the. What, what crystallized things for me like this is this is mm. it that's that's how it's done that's how I'm gonna do it uh, and, and I didn't work as a civil engineer assistant at all but I start like especially the first uh, two or three years I start working on architect project uh, mm -hmm. because very related to my to my work uh, but mostly like more of a decoration uh, uh, projects more of a uh, creating uh, exterior designs Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's it. Then I moved on to animation and, and VFX. Amazing. Okay. Uh, when you first start applying to work in VFX, do you remember how many places you have applied for? Or sorry, how many places do have you you have applied to? Uh, yeah. Um, before two thousand and nine. Um, I don't recall applying to a lot of uh, studios um, outside the Gulf and outside um, Syria, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And the reason mm -hmm. is, there were two reasons. The first reason is that like these studios were like, uh, especially then where our experience wasn't that much, we were always like thinking that they are doing some, <coughs> sorry, some really <coughs> magic work there. It's, it's outside our, it's, it's, it's not in our league, to be honest. Especially when yeah, you are not in Europe, uh, so I didn't I didn't apply a lot, uh, but surprisingly, uh, after two thousand and nine, uh, and after the that very uh, inflation of historical movies in Hollywood mm -hmm. and historical drama in 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 Syria, it mm -hmm. was like between uh, nineteen ninety six I believe to two thousand and six. Uh, this mm -hmm. period of ten, year, of 10 years, uh, there was something like uh, really great about crowd simulation that, um, I mean, me and my friends, the people who worked in the same industry, we know how to do a character, we know how to create fur, like, we know at least even if we don't know how exactly we do it, uh, we mm -hmm. know that this is how it's done. We can like uh, put it in our mind and like uh, this is how it's done, but it's done on a higher level for uh, like vis visual effects movies. Yeah. and stuff like that so we're like uh we have some conciliation with ourselves like it it's it's in our league but when lord of the rings like first appears and uh, <clears throat> and troy especially troy for me at least we're looking at those these crowd shots and we have no ideas how this is happening what are they like mm -hmm. are they like animating each character or like duplicating each character what kind of uh what kind of, of hardware they have what so it's like Something really new. So uh, in 2009, uh, I was a supervisor at one of the companies here in Syria, and the boss asked me to like, we want to do a crowd simulation shot. I told him that this is only for big uh, companies. We don't have nearly the resource to do this. He said, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. care. You, you're gonna do it. <laughs> we need it on our showreel. <laughs> yeah. So somehow I, I was mentally like, uh, start to prepare myself to that a few years ago. Like I want to do this. And when I start doing it, and it actually worked, eventually we did the very simple shot. I knew that things are going to change. <clears throat> I knew that mm -hmm. this is probably my ticket to get into uh, an international work. So from this moment, I'm, I'm trying to relate that to your question. From 2009 or 2010, when I have my first crowd simulation shot done by myself, by myself uh, each time I apply, I get some notification. I'm not, I'm not mm. they're not ghosting me. You see what I mean? Yes, <laughs> they're not yes, ghosting yes. me. They need crowd uh, technical directors and there are very few in the world. So uh, they always like, there's an option. There's probably an interview, even if it didn't work for some reason, the visa reason, whatever it is, uh, I start to be on the map. So mm. uh, so the first thing I did, I, I, I uh, I sent an email to Digital Tutors, if you remember, it's, it's now called Blurl Site. Uh, and I told them I, oh, want to yeah. Do, yeah, I want to do a tutorial about cross simulation. I noticed that you don't have any. And surprisingly, they went back to me and said, yeah, why not? Let's do a phone call. 
just to see your English. And uh, let's, I'm, I, I did three tutorials uh, for crowd simulation using Massive. And from that moment, I, I didn't have this trouble of applying. When I apply, I, I, I get noticed. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's because you're you were you were an instructor in a, in a big. Uh... Yeah, I I I'm I'm on the map now. Even if I didn't yeah, work on, exactly. a, on a visual effects company, they can see that I have my portfolio and uh, mm -hmm. I did something that proved my experience. So uh, and that's also come in handy when you come to I I did a historical uh, series on on two thousand and uh, and sixteen. Uh, I did mm -hmm. the crowd shots for this historical series, and it was the, the first Arabic historical series that have crowd shots. As far as I know, uh, it was called Al Imam. Uh, it was only on Qatar TV. Uh, I think Omar mm -hmm. had some some uh, some uh, crowd simulation shots, but I can't recall it like uh, properly. And it has way way better budget than us. But that was also a good step. So I'm, you see, it's I'm kind of like jumping from one one. Uh, one step to another to like put myself uh, as much as I can on the map. So uh, again, applying wasn't a problem after after uh, becoming a crowd uh, simulation specialist. But before, I didn't even apply to other companies rather than Gulf and and uh, and Syria. Okay. Uh, did your work experience at MPC live up to your expectations? Uh, you mean my work experience as like, did I feel myself fit into uh, MPC or the, the other way around? So basically it's mainly because before MPC you were a freelancer working from home or for like, uh, let's say local companies or... Exactly, uh, yeah. Company from the Gulf and then yes. after, after, and then you, you, you worked at MPC. What's, yes. do, do you know what's the difference or and is it did the work at MPC live up to expectations in terms of quality and the uh, pipeline yes. and yes uh, working with MPC uh, was really amazing I'm not trying to do an ad for anyone uh, I'm just trying to be fair um, yeah, yeah yes uh, the, the major the major differences there was the, the pipeline uh, mm -hmm. because in my mind, uh, before I get into MPC, pipeline means that uh, putting files with their respected uh, conventions names on their folders with the right mm -hmm. paths. So the whole project is uh, is structured together. But mm -hmm. uh, when I work with MPC, and uh, you know how it goes, you have like uh, a whole division with 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 separated softwares that guarantee to take all your work, whatever it is. And gather it together with other works into uh, mm -hmm. a, a certain shot, and then go and get it to render. <clears throat> this is this is probably the magic ingredients that uh, I had no idea about before I get into MPC. This is, I mean, mm. when I saw that, I knew that how how can you build uh, an amazing top-notch movies uh, with a, with a perfect VFX uh, uh, like that? I mean. Uh, I know how to avoid these problems that we all uh, had it before, like we get into big companies. So the pipeline was the really uh, magic things that I that really really uh, I was amazed about. Uh, mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I learned like a lot from there. There was a lot of supporting. All the leads are supportive, really supportive, and there mm -hmm. was uh, really focusing on getting your work as perfect as possible not as perfect as possible it had to be perfect really there's uh, a few times my shot like there's a click here there's a click here like something it it will definitely never be noticed but i learned uh that the combination of all this will give you the perfect result that that leads to Oscar. Yeah, you're pushing the details exactly. as much as you can exactly exactly and with this pipeline you can get experience we can you can get talents with all their works with all their flaws and gathering together uh, to, 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 to assemble a great team and, and get that great job into the work. So uh, uh, I would say working with MPC was great experience and I tried to mm -hmm. live up to their expectation and the expectation of everyone else. We all worked hard. When I get in, I got in, everyone is like uh, clicking on the keyboard, like uh, everyone is, is in rush with time. So when I sat down and, and uh, I felt that everyone is working to get this shot great, so I have to do my part mm -hmm. in, do, in also getting this shot great. You feel the responsibility, you feel 
uh, you, you are working on a movie, you know for sure it's going to at least nominate it for an Oscar, okay? And it was it actually was a surprise it, it didn't won the Oscar. So when you, you do that, uh, everything's changed. You, your whole mentality is changing. So you can like, you, you adapt to this new pipeline, new, new environment of works. Uh, so yeah, it was great, and I learned a lot of it. It's it's a completely different experience. Uh, Besser, in your opinion, uh, opinion, sorry, what's the biggest asset uh, to be able to work in those studios? The first thing I think, the greatest thing is to put uh, a great title under your belt. So when you are working on something like Transformers or Jurassic World or whatever it is, you are like, um, how can I put it? Uh, you are registered like this guy worked on triple a movies he know the drill he know how it works he know all about this pipeline uh so you have a way better chance on on get hired again mm -hmm. and second thing your show reel this is will add a lot to your show reel this the 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 title and the the shots that you worked on will add a lot to show reel because you are you're not working alone you're working uh with a combination of probably uh, a thousand person mm -hmm. Okay, there's probably a hundred person who worked on this shot that you are part of it. But when you put it in your show reel, uh, it becomes your shot. People will look at it and appreciate it and give this credit to you. Well, it's actually, it's divided between all the people who worked on. Mm -hmm. So it's way better than working with yourself or in a very, very small company uh, to create some, some good shot or some really good shot. Uh, people eventually won't say that you did this with with four peoples and with a couple of PCs, uh, and you did the other shots with like hundreds of people. Uh, uh, they will appreciate the shot itself. So this is the first thing you get. You get something great on a credit size, on a credit side. Like this guy worked on this company and this movies mm -hmm. on this guy on this level of work. And the second thing is you get the experience of uh, working in a team within a pipeline. So uh, that will get you to know things better uh, uh, and, and, and you will be able to like develop yourself. Even, even later on, if you want to start your own business, you will think things differently. You will know how to think like uh, big studio uh, thinking. Um, and also you will get to know a lot of uh, people uh, from your own community. Mm -hmm. uh, connections is always great. Uh, you might even uh, be considered for other divisions and other disciplines mm -hmm. uh, within the same company if you are a generalist, which is something that actually is happening with me at the moment. Uh, and also, um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the, the experience itself was really great. Uh, there was a work pressure, but there wasn't an environment pressure. Mm. I mean... Probably this is for this is for my experience. Maybe yeah. other other places have some environment pressure, but uh, the work the work pressure to do things as perfect as it can get, and at the same time there's a lot of smiling faces, uh, a lot of people just offering help, uh, a lot of people welcome you, uh, celebrating your birthday out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of things. It's a, it's a really cool 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 place to work in. Yeah, really. Perfect. Is the is the VFX community helpful in your opinion? In general, I mean online or absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Everyone, everyone's there. Everyone is putting. If you if you search on YouTube, you can you can practically practically learn uh, almost everything within our <coughs> industry at least to start and be a, a, a more be more than a medium guy. Be more like a, a professional, an experienced guy. You can learn whatever you want on YouTube. A lot of people putting their tutorials, mm -hmm. a lot of people answering questions uh, through blogs and, and, uh, and websites, and uh, a lot of people ready to help you in, in anything. Mm -hmm. So yes, absolutely, absolutely. VFX community is, is uh, in terms of individuals and good spirit, uh, it's great. We have some, I remember in the 90s, <laughs> when I start like working on this, uh, sometimes you ask people questions and they don't answer you. It's like, like it's it's more of a of a career secrets. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, State there was like committed... <laughs> exactly exactly. <laughs> there was like uh, so you have to like try to get a book out of here and there like and it was really rare here in Syria. 
So when I did when I did that to, to conquer that, like I went to the documentation uh, of 3D Max and mm -hmm. start translating me and my friend from start to finish. Now things are different. Uh, everyone's friendly. Everyone's ready to answer your questions. Uh, YouTube is filled with with, uh, with 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 videos about all disciplines and all examples and making of. Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's a great day for 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 this industry. Amazing. Uh, Bessel, would you ever like, or is it a goal of yours to produce uh, your own work or project? It could be a movie or <coughs> game or whatever, or painting. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did that actually. I did that. Um, I produced for other like a very very mini series, cartoonish series. Mm -hmm. I like uh, a couple of times. I did that a couple of times. Write a script to direct everything, and 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 even got into animation and like. Uh, Worked with a couple, of, like a small team, if you can call it like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I actually created a short movie in 2004. It's called uh, Alien Breakout, I think. Mm -hmm. Alien Break. I'm not sure of the, the. It's just I was really fascinated by the Alien series, mm -hmm. so I did a small movie uh, about an alien runaway from a base. There was other two characters, but the people who works with me like withdraw from the from the project. So I. I rewrite everything and make it like just one character, which is the alien, so I can do it myself. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I did that before, and I would like to do that. Uh, I would love to do that, but um, I mean, it's 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 hard to do it unless you want to do it like on your own cost. I I love short yeah, movies. Yeah, I really yeah, love course. short movies, but uh, short movies, to be honest, it doesn't pay well because there's nothing. You're not gonna gonna publish it. You're not gonna sell it. So when you have to do this, you have to be ready to, like, this is a completely artistic work and it probably to draw attention to yourself, but there's not going to be any, any incomes, most likely, out of this. Yeah, uh, I agree with you, but you have to start somewhere, right? Uh, I understand, I understand, but, yeah, but again, because I, I, don't I think did that already. Any, any yeah, director or, or producer would start having money straight away from his, his first project, so exactly, exactly. we have to but learn, I mean, as, as, I mean, we or someone who wants exactly. to, to do his own project, he has to start somewhere, right? Exactly, but as I mentioned before, in the last 10 years, uh, it's all about surviving. I have, yeah. to, I, have to take, I have to take into consideration <coughs> uh, uh, the income. Because mm. uh, now I'm supporting a family, uh, it's a different thing. I'm not like that uh, 20 years uh, old person who doesn't have any responsibility and want to do things for art, which I was before, and I did that. Yeah, yeah. So when, it, when a chance comes, and, and there's, a, if there's a good chance uh, to like doing something like that, when I feel like I'm uh, comfortable in, in, in some aspect and I have some, some luxury in time and, 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 uh, and funding mm -hmm. to do that, I would love to do that. And I have... I wrote a lot of scripts for short movies, uh, actually, and I did write a script for a series, a cartoonish series. It's all stacked there, <laughs> but uh, I didn't, I didn't fool myself. I said, if, it, if, if a good chance comes and we can produce any of these, then it's fine. If not, it's also fine. I mean, this is life. Uh, it, it doesn't always come as, as, you, as you expected. You yeah. have to take responsibility. And uh, we're probably from the same generation, Al Halim. As I mentioned, when you are, uh, you have a family. Uh, yeah. You mentioned you have a family, and I have a family. These are responsibility that comes above everything. No, of course. And this is something you don't you don't relate to until you actually have a family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You start working with this, <laughs> you feel that this is going to be your life. Your whole life is going to be around you creating of creating the best VFX or animation possible. Once you have a family, once you like start having kids. You feel that this is the true life, and everything else is. Uh, yeah, it's a huge responsibility. Or, or you can't family. say to your exactly. family, "Yeah, you know what? I want to and do you're short movie." And content with that. You you like it. <laughs> you're surprised that you actually liked it. <laughs> you're surprised yeah. that okay, VFX is now second to my kids. Like, and I'm completely happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Not a very not a very inspiration <laughs> speech, I think, <laughs> for artists. <laughs> Uh, what skills do you think would help you improve your work? Uh, let's say it could be photography or painting or even, I don't know. Yes. Anything? Well, I start, yeah, 
I, I used to draw a little bit when I was uh, young, and mm-hmm. as you expected, I drawed like all the kinds of animals and, and, and monsters and uh, <laughs> and and uh, posters from gaming, like nothing real, nothing real. I, I always like to have uh, imaginative things. I, I, I hate when I draw, I hate to draw anything real. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, I didn't continue with that and my drawing like is really bad for now. Uh, I think the, the, the skill that I have is, um, uh, I would say, I would say an eye for, for directing. That's, okay. that's the, 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 yeah, that's what I, what I, what I got benefit from. I watched a lot of movie when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. So I, I reached a point where I can predict where the camera is coming from now and what's going to happen next. Even if the movie is completely new, uh, and I can like get some mistakes. I can always say like this, you know what, this, this script could be much better. This, uh, this angle is better. This chapter is, is very long. So I can apply that even on the smallest shot. I try to like give it a, a small cinematic uh, uh, feeling. Even if it's not related, even if it's like uh, a completely industrial work, like mm-hmm. let's say. For example, the last work I did was uh, uh, a 3D guide for uh, traffic. Uh, for uh, uh, traffic uh, traffic regulations, mm-hmm. so it was it wasn't like it doesn't require a lot of artistic as much as uh, uh, committing to the traffic rules when you like getting your three D cars to 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 work on the street. And still, I tried to like give the, the the best cameras possible in certain areas when we like not talking about something specific. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think this is this is the skill I have. Uh, yeah, writing probably writing is a very good skill. I think I I, I believe I I own. Uh, Basil, how have things changed since the pandemic started? Uh, how did you adapt to the crisis? Well, uh, pandemic is was something unexpected, uh, really. Um, uh, the major problem is uh, after I went back from UK, I was like um, willing to to participate in other projects, even if it was temporary, even if I'm not going to settle down in other countries. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, uh, and and to be honest, there's a lot of talking right now with with many studios. But uh, pandemic is killing a lot of my ch- my chances. Really, mm. travel restrictions, especially to Canada, is is making visa even even harder to get. Uh, so it it's it was unexpected, and it was really hard to 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 like. Business wise, I'm saying mm. in Syria, I don't think there's a lot of infestation uh, because unfortunately we are an isolated country, so there's not much of people coming and going to Syria. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. So there, there, there wasn't much of an infestation, and we start getting vaccine now. Uh, there was a time of quarantine that I did some good use in it uh, to like uh, start creating my my uh, Houdini crowds techniques. Uh, so I, I, I try not to waste time at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but but uh, in business wise, it was really really uh, bad, really bad. Uh, y- you keep getting this problem with with traveling and projects keeps delaying. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it it was bad. Adapting was to like stay home and pray to Allah, like please lift this curse over this world. And and try to use your time with the with the best way possible. Uh, Basil, we're going to the last chapter of our uh, of our episode. Uh, so n- now let's wind up. L- let's wind back. Sorry. Uh, can you give us a glimpse uh, into growing up in Syria? Uh, 